to states. Hey, everybody. Uh, John and I are just talking about cost of living and inflation, and John is on a rant. Go ahead. So back in the day, people used to come to Los Angeles to pursue a career in entertainment, and there were a wave of – you could come to L.A., you could be a server, you could wait tables, you could uh, do that to you know, practice your craft. So whether you want to be an actor, musician, whatever, like L.A. was about that. There is no way you can do that today. There is no way you can live um, being a server or off, off gratuity anymore. Your server plus trust fund. Yeah, exactly. And also, you know, this, uh, this generation, um, no one can buy a house. I mean, unless you're living somewhere, not in the city. Yeah. Yeah. We can't buy houses anymore. Um, life is so expensive, Sean. I hate to be a, a complainer. Uh, there are people worse off obviously than, than us, but, uh, it blows my mind every day. It's interesting. I am now living in a what I consider to be a low cost of living area, but I am temporarily here in Montreal. I'm right. not forever here in Montreal. Um, and Do you feel plan- it there or no? You don't What's feel that? it there. Do you feel it there, Montreal? Well, I don't. I, my rent is so cheap that I'm not yeah. feeling it. Yeah, you're I'm not, not feeling, feeling it. it. And I also reduced all of my expenses. Like I, my expenses are now whatever my business and then a storage unit in Arizona and mm. then my rent in Montreal. Like, yeah. That's going to change when I, when I move to LA. Yes. You're going to, <laughs> when you come now, to LA, you're going to be worried. like, what the fuck? You're going to be I'm... like a uh, hundred dollars for lunch and rent is three grand. And like, how are people doing it? Yeah. Well, I think we got to eat. I mean, I hate to say it, but eating out is a mega huge expense. Yeah. That's one of my, uh, we eat out a lot, but, but man, it brings, that's like the, God, when you're a parent, it's like, what else do you do? There's a uh, hey, <laughs> funny story. There's a place called Angeles Crest here. Uh, it's up in the hills. It's about 15 minutes away. And uh, someone said the new thing to do is for parents to go up there at night because they can't afford a hotel. They can't afford to, <laughs> to go out to eat. And they just go up there in a minivan's park and, and, and have sex. So Dude. there's like a line of cars at <laughs> Angeles Crest. <laughs> Um, just uh, desperate parents trying to make love. Bro, that's find like time to make love. <laughs> the eighties and the nineties all over again. You should be all over this. Oh man, it's hilarious. This is what we used to do as teens. Yeah, I know, I know. Sex but now we're, we're doing because we're poor, we're broke. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, things are more expensive. Shrinkflation, inflation, everything. Yeah. Um, it does feel. It does feel like that for sure. Um, and I don't have a money crunch. As much as other people do, but I feel like I have a money crunch. Mm. That's the weird part. And yeah. I, and I, I think because I have some weird money issues. Um, yeah, I think I do too. Um, it's so interesting, man, how the residue of our childhood and how we were raised impacts us. Uh, not just money, but everything, you know. Here's a funny story. Uh, it's not that funny, but for a long time, my dad, um, you know, I'll be honest. He, I don't think he ever really supported what I did or wanted to do. Mm. And I, I've always been kind of floundering a little bit. And he always wanted to help me. He was like a successful businessman. And mm-hmm. then he became uh, an okay venture capitalist. And so he would invest in businesses and he would, he's always thinking about business. And so I think yeah. he kind of, he was always trying to help me with like get jobs and stuff. And like, they were never anything I ever wanted to do. And I never wanted to work with him because we had a very conflictual relationship growing up. Mm. And I just didn't want to now also be working with my dad. Right. But I remember once I told him I wanted to be a, a love coach and I wanted to help people date. And he was like, I don't think that's a great idea. I don't think you can make that happen. Mm. And I, and all I wanted for him was to support me and to be right. like, Hey, that sounds really hard, but I'm with you 100%. Right. And I felt one day I told him, like, I feel like you think I'm one of your failed businesses that you have to figure out how to turn around. Oh, what did he say to that? Uh, he, I, I, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember it, but I do remember saying that. And that's how I felt. I felt like I was just another project for him. Mm. And that I was, my lack of success was a reflection on his inability to be a good father. Right. Right. You know, and all of his buddies, they all went to Stanford. All their kids were going to Stanford. And I went to UCSB and I graduated with a 2.4 GPA. Like I barely scraped by. Mm. 
And so I always kind of felt like a disappointment and and I'm going to bring it back to money. I remember one day he was like, Hey, one of my friends, um, his son works for Toyota. And he's got, <laughs> he's got a great job programming radios. And I was like, yeah. programming radios. I go, okay, well, um, and he goes, and, he, and he's making good money. And I go, Oh, well, is he happy? And my dad looks at me, seriously, looks at me. He goes, what the fuck does that have to do with it? Mm. And so it's just a totally different viewpoint. That's a boomer what thing. Is important. That's a boomer yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Like, uh, don't worry about happy. Um, make sure that you're safe. Make sure that there's you have a 401k. Make sure you're um, – yeah, I mean, my parents the same way. I, I think I uh, – you know, I, I was always jealous of people like you uh, who, who, who was able to have deeper conversations with uh, their parents. Um, me being Korean, don't speak Korean well. My parents being um, – Korean don't speak English well. Uh, we're, we're not able to speak. It's like we speak like fourth graders. Like you know, what did you have for lunch? <laughs> look, look at the sun's bright today. What time are you going to sleep? <laughs> like that kind of shit. Um, we, we don't have the capacity to like say, you know, what's really going on inside, and are you ha none of these deep conversations? And I used to be very jealous of that, but now I'm thinking. Maybe that's a good thing because it protected me from a lot of conversations where my parents, my parents can't go deep on me. You know, they're like, you know, I, dude, I'm first what are you of all, doing I'm, today? I'm dying yeah. because it, this is so funny, but also really sad. sad. Yeah. No, it's just... really sad. It's really sad. Like the idea that you as a child, like didn't speak the, the language that your parents primarily spoke right. to me sounds like kind of a wild concept. It's crazy. Can you even imagine that? Can you imagine that what you can speak, uh, like think about growing up, what you can talk, t talk to your, your parents about is like just a base, just foundation of fourth grade kind of, you can't speak about anything more than that. You guys aren't able to. Can you imagine? Well, what happened? <laughs> well, you just do it with your friends. No, but what happened? Where did the breakdown happen where your parents were like, yeah, we're just not going to talk to John in Korean that much. Um, because they, that's they how you they learn tried, the language. I know they, they they tried, so I could speak Korean. It's just kind of broken. They tried to uh, they tried to enroll us in Korean school, and uh, at that time, my brother and I we were uh, already like thirteen, fourteen. We're like we're not going to Korean school, and then uh, they never went to English school, so they could only uh, speak from just street level, whatever they picked up on the streets. So yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. going to get anything deep. You're not going to get you know deeper conversations yeah. with that kind of vocabulary. So. That's it, man. You know, <laughs> what do you that's want for dinner? <laughs> that's wild, dude. It's wild because what time did, what, how old were you when you moved to, uh, from Korea to the States? Uh, I was three. Three Because I feel like even if you got no schooling, if you got two parents that are engaged, yeah. they can teach you Korean or whatever their language is well, all the way. They also, they were never home. So yeah, right, right. That's it was only like on the weekends. Yeah, yeah, Totally. Yeah, yeah you're getting yeah. like nights and weekends. You're getting yes. ESL classes from your fucking <laughs> yes. parents. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> so the only deep conversations I could have about feelings and shit was with my friends, right? And so, um, yeah, isn't that weird? I, I, I think it's normal because I, I don't know anything else. But um, all, my, all the people around me are like, what the fuck? I can't even imagine that. It know? is weird. Yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. say that explains a lot of things about you. What does that mean, Sean? <laughs> it's nothing. It's just a bad joke. I gave Sean a stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> I, it probably does. Absolutely. I think I'm sure it does. And, and, that, and, you know, again, I don't know how, but I'm sure all, all of this manifests, all of our stories, um, you know, they have, an, they have an impact on us for sure. Well, you have an excuse for why you didn't have a close relationship with your parents. Yeah, a lot, uh, yeah, I, I literally couldn't. <laughs> yeah, a lot of <laughs> a lot of people didn't have a close relationship with their parents because their parents didn't want to or didn't. Yeah, do, the, so yeah. that that's like another story that people are walking around with. Like, my parents didn't love me; they didn't actually want to go deeper or teach me how to navigate an emotional landscape or all that stuff. Or they had really close relationships with their parents, where they were almost like best friends, and they were so close it was enmeshed, and it was uh, more like not your mom or dad, but your you know sister brother friend kind of thing and that was as complicated yeah or they yeah. had a fucking perfect childhood like you see on tv sometimes or like some of your friends are like how do you guys have such a beautiful amazing mm, yeah. open loving childhood and i think yeah. some people also had that rare but yeah yeah you think rare i think it's rare i don't know many who 
come from like a me and if they say they do i'm always like okay tell me more i'll bet you there's something there's a dead body in your house somewhere man totally yeah your dad was a secret cocaine addict or (laughs) something yeah uh okay so we wanted to start with how can we do better one thing one thing we can do better i want you to start because i have a i have a big problem that i need to share with you Oh shit! This is yeah. dramatic. Yeah. Wow. Ten so, minutes in. Ten yeah, minutes go. in. Sean dropping bombs. Um, I uh, this is fresh. This just happened ten minutes ago. I realized um, that when uh, uh, my partner runs ideas by me or she wants to do something, I tend to uh, push back. Uh, not not on purpose. It's almost a knee jerk. Like, oh, wait, what if we did it this way? You know, I, t- I tend to correct, adjust instead of just fully accept. And it's funny because you were just talking about your, you're saying to your dad, oh, I wish you would have just support, accept me, not like here's something that can be better or question, you know, you being a love coach or whatever, just, just first accept you, you know, and, uh, that's something I can do better. And so this mm. morning, uh, she had an idea for something and I, I started to be like, well, what if we did this or what if you did? And, and I shut up. And I was like, let's do it. Let's do it. Just, I just said, let's, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So that's something what I was, to work what on. What was the idea? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's social media stuff. We have to turn in videos for, for a sponsor. Oh, and okay. She had some ideas that I didn't want, you know, I was going to questioning, but I was like, why a question? Just do it. Well, yeah, I think that's great. Is that part of that is what's, what's the knee jerk? reaction there is it because you want to control is it because you you think you have a better idea is, is it like yeah what, i think on, why on is the, it there i think on the surface um it's me coming in i mean i'm an aries i'm a fire sign kind of kicking doors and say okay here's a better way to do it uh genuinely believing that and then on a deeper level maybe it has to do with um control or other other relationship dynamics i'm not really aware of consciously you know yeah oh man it's so I, i'm just now starting to question all of the relationship dynamics mm. or the blind spots that I have that, that I'm not aware of and how oh, you're playing back old relationships. No, I'm just, no, I'm playing back current relationships mm. and figuring out why, why am I attracted to this and, and what's my role in all this. But um, not to detract from your thing. I think that's, that's a really good one is to just like trust. Also trust Vanessa. Yeah. Just say yes. It's, just, just say, say yes. yes. Also, yeah. it's less work to just say yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you could be wrong. See what happens. Go with it, you know? It's a learning experience. Yeah. Then you can say, I told you so. <laughs> exactly. Then or, you can or, say, I or, told you so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or or I, I was going to say something, but I didn't because I wanted to see if, if your idea was going to work, and it didn't. So anyways, let's go yeah, my because way. Yeah, because I told you so. It's a bigger prize. You know, It's like the big <laughs> stuffed animal. It's like you're trading in the little stuffed animals for the fucking giant one that you get to take home. We're kidding, everybody. We're kidding. <laughs> we can do better, Sean. Our jokes. I think can that's be good. Better. I think that's good. Yeah. Trust people. Trust Vanessa. Um, too many cooks. Like we, we don't need one more. It's like when someone's cooking and you come in and you like fucking start stirring the onions. Yeah, or you're like, hey, why don't we do this? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's like someone creating something and you kind of interject without permission. Now, if they say, hey. I have a question for you. How can I, can you help me with this? But without that question, you just, you just barge in and you kind of like, you know, fuck with someone's um, process. This is good. This is like good, actionable things. Yeah. Finally. Uh, How many episodes are we in? 11. (laughs) 11. Hey, (laughs) hey, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Slow. Yeah. I think slow and steady wins the race anyways. Yeah. That's what she said. So, oh man! Okay, dad, here we go, I'm dude. dude you ready? I'm Fifty-one, you, dude. Sorry. We got to retire it. I was waiting. Oh, yeah, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, dude. <laughs> Sean, I, look, man, John, I got like I got like three jokes. Dude, John. I need that. I need this. I need that. That's what she said. I mean, listen. I'll be honest with you. No one laughs. No one laughs anymore. Because I I do it at the gym. I do it on text threads, and people, everyone just rolls their eyes. It's not funny. I get it, but dude, John, God, I've been it's sitting like... on this for three episodes. Oh, you've been sitting on this. I've been waiting. Oh, yeah. Oh, you've yeah, been I've waiting been... for me to do one. Yes. So could... I, oh, I, I didn't want to bring it up because people are wow. like, give John a break. He can't handle so much f- criticism or feedback. So I was like, all right, I'm going to give him a break. Uh, if it comes back up. Have I been, ha- how many, um, um, that's what she said, jokes have I done on, since Probably we... like, like six or seven. Oh, that many? I think so. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, listen, I, I never get a laugh. I know they're ridiculous. There's something about it that it's just silly. It's it makes me feel 
But yeah, I think you're right, man. I think we got to retire. I mean, if no one's laughing, why am I? What's the point, right? I don't know. You tell me. What's the what's going on there? It just it's an easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. I have said some really clever ones, but most of them are yeah, slow and steady. They're very predictable. It's knee jerk. It's knee. It's knee jerk, man. It's knee jerk. It's knee jerk. There's no effort. I gotta. You know, we can do better with. I can do better with humor. I gotta try harder. I can't it's, recycle jokes, man. It's low hanging fruit. And then, and then, you know, what I do. I, I, I give the excuse that I'm old, or I give the excuse that I'm a dad, yeah. and and I can do better than that. So whenever, I, whenever I do something that isn't funny or that is kind of cheesy, I hide behind being a dad. Well, you know what I'm saying. Think dad jokes are funny. Dad jokes are funny. They're they're like they're they're cheesy. They're yeah. they're usually harmless. Right, they're they're kind of yuck yuck. But that's not you're saying that's not, so. The, the the she said thing is not a dad joke. No, it's, that's just it's, outdated. It's outdated and it's sexualizing everything that women. Oh, I didn't think about that part. Yeah. Oh yes. So is that why it's not funny anymore? The temperature mm-hmm. has changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Okay. It's like everything that someone says that could be sexual. It's it's that that's what she. It's never that's what he said. Right. Even though it's always that's what he said. It's never that's what she said. She never said. S- How do you think that started? Who start- was this from the show The Office? Like, well, no, I think it just started. I don't know actually where it started from, but but yeah, he Michael Scott popularized it for sure. Yeah, he popularized it. Yeah, but even but- when he said it, it wasn't funny. What was funny was that it's cringy when someone says it. Yes. So, because I'm sure it started with something sexual. And then they went to she said, because it's always something sexual, like the one I just said right now, the the uh, the slow and steady. That's a sexual thing. I mean, slow it's sexual. Ste- yeah, is the way to that's go. I mean, said. but you right. you know you're right. It is like slow and steady is the way to go in bed. I mean, you remember that uh, every time you <laughs> you you open a, a Chinese fortune cookie, you can what? you can add whatever the whatever the like little saying is. It's always like a piece of advice. You can always add in bed at the end of it. Oh, I never. No, I never. Yeah, I never like that. fortune okay. favors the bold in bed. In bed. Oh, okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. It's okay. It's very juvenile. Yeah. When you said, uh, yeah, the whole thing with it, that it is that it is why is it always a she? That kind of landed with me. I think you're right. Now it's the joke. The joke is almost inappropriate. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't land today with people? It's a little. It's it's sexist. It's sexist. It's sexist. It's sexist. Yeah. It's sexist. Yeah. It's sexist. So we yeah. could we could do better. I wonder if we just start start doing that's what he said jokes to kind of swing the pendulum. But no, nah. I'm I'm gonna let you go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm only gonna try to I'm, you know I'm just gonna be trying to be funnier, man. Okay, I'm just gonna try to be funnier. Or or I mean, you're already a funny dude. Like you don't have to try. Well, I don't do jokes. I don't do jokes, man. Well, I, I don't I'm, do I'm, jokes I'm dry. either. I'm We're dry. Not doing, my humor's we dry. We don't do jokes. My my favorite humor is like um like. Jason Bateman humor. Yeah, he's he's really good. And he Fast. probably would pull off of that's what she said, actually on Smart List. No, there's no doubt in my mind that he does say that every now and then. Why is it funny for him? Because it's so unexpected because he's like smart and funny. <laughs> uh, maybe because he's not. It, it's like it's, uh, it's maybe it's an excuse. He's a comedian. Yeah. He's an actor. You're yeah. a therapist. Yeah. You play different roles in life. Yeah. People yeah. expect different things from each of you <laughs> that's true okay i'm retiring it it's on the shelf it's not even on the shelf it's in a fucking jar and i, I tighten the jar dude no no <laughs> holes punched in the jar no air it's dying it's on the, it's in the basement landfill it, dude it's gone it's gone no more <laughs> okay you ready yes here's my big my big uh, revelation this is huge by the way this was like very challenging for me to realize that i am to a certain degree a people pleaser Mm. How did how did this revelation happen? What what um, gave you this revelation? What? I uh, am realizing that uh, sometimes my yes, my yeses and my nos, like when I say yes to something or no to something, mm-hmm. they're not actually true yeses or nos mm. because I am taking other people into consideration too much. And it's funny because one of my favorite quotes is Glennon Doyle. Um, your only goal in life is to disappoint as many people as possible to avoid disappointing yourself even once. 
Wow. And I teach this stuff in my yeah. communication, my healthy communication courses, emotional availability, all this stuff. And then I find myself really being scared of being fully honest with my mm. truth um, because I fear either hurting other people, mm -hmm. disappointing other people, or rejecting other people to the point where they then reject me. Mm. And so I, like an example is that someone asked me if I wanted to go to lunch and I said, sure. And she was like, sure or yes. And I was like, actually, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Did like, you say that? Actually, no? Or yes. Just, oh my yeah, well, God. This was, this was at the retreat. She, you know, my friend oh, was okay. like, do you want to have lunch with me? And I said, sure. And she goes, oh, sure. Oh, right. The exercise. This, yeah. In, well, no, this was just, we we're just talking. Mm -hmm. And I said, actually, no, you're right. And she was like, good. I would rather you be a full yes. And if it's not that, just say no. It's okay. I'll be okay. Yeah. And I'm, I was overly concerned with her experience. And I find mm. that I attune way more to people than I am attuning to myself. What was the reason you didn't want to have lunch, lunch with her? <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was, I, I was saturated, emotionally saturated. Oh, I, had no, okay. I had no space. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had no space. Um, wow. Well, thank you for saying that. Thank you for being vulnerable. Uh, you know, as you were saying that, uh, right when you finished the sentence that, that, that you tend to be a people pleaser, I was going to say, Sean, no, you're not. There was something in me that was going to um, try to protect you. Um, and then I stopped myself because, again, then I would be stripping your truth. And hmm. um, I, I, uh, I, that's surprising because I, I, uh, I don't um, – I don't experience you that way. I experience you as someone who, um, Sean's pointing a finger gun at me. I experience you as someone who is, uh, um, pretty blunt, not, not blunt, but like, uh, says, says his truth, uh, says no, if he wants to says yes, if you want, like, you know, I, I didn't know that, that, uh, you do, you, you, you please people, put people first. I don't Pedal always pattern. do it. So with some people, I feel okay doing it. With other yeah. people, I don't. And I, yeah. I need to figure out why. But also, I pointed at you because instead of saying, if someone is divulging something to you, and instead of saying, no, you're not, right? You mm -hmm. could say what John said, which is, I don't experience you that way, which is a really mm. beautiful tool. It's an yeah. amazing tool. Maybe instead of the gun, you could have given me a thumbs up because it was kind of confusing. He, he gave me a gun, like he was shooting me. Yeah. Yes. Boom. Boom. Wait, boom, you nailed it. Oh, that's okay. I get that's kind of it's a little sexier than this. It's I don't experience it that way. It's such a beautiful thing to say. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes it's the reflection that you need. Because sometimes, like, maybe I am, maybe I'm being hard on myself and I am, right. You know, I'm outing myself as a people pleaser, but really I have some tendencies or in some scenarios, this is how I show up. And so it could be nice to have a reflection of someone saying, I don't experience you that way. You know what? It, it, you know what I like about the I don't experience you that way. It, it's being respectful to your truth, but also me being honest with you how I experience you. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So if I say to you, "Oh no, you're not a people pleaser," I mean, then I'm taking your truth away. But then if I say nothing, then I'm kind of taking my truth away because I really don't experience you that way. Um, so you know, yeah. It's nice. It's also the opposite of gaslighting, right? Like I, I've been talking about, you know, my thinning hair and I go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm balding. And people are like, no, you're not. And it's like, no, right. well, what the fuck? Well, they're yes, trying to be kind. They're trying to be like, they're trying to like protect you by saying that. Yeah. But it's so weird. Yeah. Like it's my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I spend yeah. way more time looking yeah. at it than you do. Yeah. 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 So that's the, that's the realization. And I've had a few experiences this week where I feel a lot of, anxiety over conversations that I'm not having or that I'm avoiding because of mm. how uncomfortable they're going to be. And I've had those conversations recently and they've, they've gone really well. I've tried not to protect other people's feelings and I've tried to be honest. And so I get more data than around how does it feel to be honest, even if I'm yeah. going to hurt somebody. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to admit that, that I at 41 and still struggling with this stuff. Oh, well, um, Thank you. Thank you for being honest, man. Thank you for being vulnerable. I, I mean, I think we all, I can't speak for all of us, but uh, I mean, I struggle with it as well. Do, do, you, do you struggle with it more with people closer to you or more with like uh, acquaintances, strangers? Uh, I, it really depends. I guess if the closer, if you're closer, uh, I might struggle more. Like I had mm. a friend, a friend coming to, to, 
to visit me for a week in Montreal and I had to tell him that I didn't, I wasn't going to have as much space for him as I was expecting that he was wanting to have. Mm -hmm. And it was really hard because he's actually not that great at, he like kind of makes me feel bad or he takes it personally. And I really hate that. And, and that's a great opportunity for me to be like, and still I'm, I'm not available you know, in, in these circumstances and to just like sit with him being disappointed. Dude, I, this is man. Some, sometimes I, uh, am blown away. At, it's, it's some of the stuff that in our lives are so parallel. So this happened just last night. I have a friend who, um, during my divorce, when I had no friends, he was one of the friends that I got really close to coffee crepes. Uh, one of the first um, friends that, uh, you know, we were, we we're vulnerable and I had my kind of workout friends and that's other uh, group of guys. And we got really close. It was a magical summer. Spent every day together. Over the years, we've drifted. Um, I, I hate to say this, but I, I love him as an acquaintance, but I don't really want to, I don't really want to, um, there's nothing wrong with our relationship or him. I don't really find the friendship. I just don't want to be his friend anymore. I don't know how to say yeah, yeah. it, you know? Yeah, just say um, it. He did nothing wrong. It's just yeah. over time, we just have different things in common. I don't really want to. And uh, every, once every month or so, he'll text me being like, you know, how can I be a better friend? Let's go out. Uh, <laughs> and I never ignore him, but fuck, I'm like, oh. And so he texted me last night. He's like, let's go. Let's like, when, when can we go, go grab some food? And uh, I was like, oh. and then I said, let's do it this during this week, uh, weekday. And, um, is it a chore? Yeah. I have anxiety when I don't want to, but I'm doing it because I don't want to be a dick. I have no reason not to do it. And also what's in that. I tell myself, what's one meal. What's what, what's that going to hurt you? You know, but I, I don't know what to, how do you, how, what do you say? Like, you know, I can't just, I don't want to just avoid him, you know? So. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, this is fantastic. This is such a great topic. Um, what did you Should just I say? send this episode to him? Should I just say, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we kidding. can do better. Never we can do, do better. <laughs> Uh, what did you just say? Uh, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't cost me anything. Yeah. It doesn't cost me anything. It does cost you something. Mm. It costs you a lot. We're thinking about it. We're talking about it. Now we're making thousands of people listening to the, listen to this yeah. story. It's costing yeah. you mental energy, anxiety in your body. Yeah. yeah. It's a waste of your time. You know, for being super honest, this, this relationship is not feeding you. So what would you say? Would you say to this person because they, they, he will constantly text me every other week, uh, once a month, because he doesn't understand how he. What would you say to? Would you just be dude, direct this and be is, like, "A friend breakup is harder. It's that's, even harder than like a fucking divorce." Sean, that's what this is. You just nailed it. This is such a topic that no one talks about. A friend breakup. It's we a never talk breakup. about friend breakups. We talk about other romantic breakups. You're right. Like, how, because, do you, how, how do you break up with a friend? You, you so, just start fade away. Yeah, most people fade away or they co-ghost and kind of hope that, that they get the, the idea. Um, and I think they're particularly hard because in a romantic relationship, we understand. Breakups happen all the time. We talk about yeah. them all the time. If I'm not romantically interested in you anymore, it makes sense for us not to continue to see each other. But it, with a friend, you're actually saying, I don't even like you enough as a person. <laughs> I know it hurts more, man. Yeah, and and in the romantic relationship, you feel it instantly, obviously, right? Even if you're not living together, but you're, but with a friend, there's you know space. You're not talking to the friend every day, and so it, it's a little. God, it can it can be, um, you know, it could come out of nowhere. It could be uh, a. It could be taken very personally, like you said, because it's like, oh, you don't. Why don't you want to be friends with me? Was, yeah. Yeah. I uh, so. I don't know. I mean, a, a <laughs> thing, hard. a thing, a thing that I've said, a thing that I've said, which is that is a bit. It's not a cop out, but it's um, something along the lines of, um, "Hey, I'm overwhelmed socially these days, and I don't have enough time to spend um, with my really close friends, mm. and so I'm prioritizing people that are you know closer in my life." Well, I'm glad we're talking about this, Sean, because I have something to tell you. Oh, fuck. Guys, it is going to be 12 episodes. <laughs> Wait, can't we still do this without being friends? No, we can't. It would be well, weird. I said we could be partners. Yeah, no, we, we, have to be, we have to be friends. I think it's really hard to say, like, I've outgrown our friendship. 
Well, when do we ever practice that? The the way that friendships end is people just kind of slowly drift and stop talking. No, there's no announcement. And I've always said you don't need announcement, but now listening to you, maybe you do. Maybe we actually do have a conversation with our friends and saying, "Listen, history isn't enough and you were kind of you have different interests, we're turning to different people and God, how do you, I don't even know how you would even start to break up with a friend. Fuck, that's well, I tough, think, man. I think uh, stay tuned because next week John will tell us how it went. Oh, Sean's giving me homework now. <laughs> Dude, no. I, th- th- that's heavy lifting, man. I, it's easier. It's okay, easier fine. To I'll break. do it. I'll do yeah. it for you. Just send me his phone number and I'll Jeez. do it. No, that's mean. It's easier to break up with a romantic partner than a friend. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I think you could just say something like, uh, you know, if I'm being super honest with you, I feel like uh, we're drifting a little yeah. bit. We've drifted and and um, I'm sort of prioritizing. I've got other priorities in my life yeah. right now. And yeah. I really, I wish you tons of love. And I really want to, I also really want to honor how close we were and um, Ooh, what, I role like you, that. what role you played. I like that in part. Yeah. My post divorce. Like, I don't think I could have gotten out of that situation without you. And so that means a lot to me. Um, and so I'm sending you tons of love. And if we run into each other, please, you know, like don't hesitate to say hi and, if you um, are going through this, rewind and just copy and paste. Write down what Sean just said. That was perfect. That script was perfect. Uh, he highlighted the value that you had in the friendship um, and then also that you're drifting. I, I love that. Yeah, maybe I'll send him an audio a voice, a voice note. But um, thank you, Sean. That's great. Keep it to a minute. Yeah, don't go on and on. Yeah. Hey, hold on real quick. Tess, you might have to. I'm going to mark this. I, I got some crazy noise in my apartment. Hold on. Mm. By the way, I can't hear anything. Riverside is really great at yeah, echo yeah. cancellation. Yeah, all good. Tess, yeah, yeah. you could just cut that out, but anyways. So yeah, right. friend breakup, dude. That's tough. Great topic. I came out of nowhere. Great topic. Just, I, just, you just know, like the friend breakups coming out of nowhere. <laughs> actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I've been avoiding having this conversation for a year now. Um, yeah. Hey, if you're listening to this, uh, go to Instagram, go to the discussion post and talk like let us know how did you break up with your friend? How did that go? Were were you someone who was broken up with? Yeah. Or leave us a voicemail. Yes. Leave us, yeah, yes. leave us a voicemail. Right now is a good I, good time to plug the voicemail. I don't know the number by heart. And so I'm pulling it up as we speak. Uh, 657-549-1001. Leave us a voicemail. 657-549-1001. Your questions, your comments, your feedback, your experience getting broken up with or breaking up as a friend. Or if you've had a couple glasses of wine and you want to say something just a little spontaneous, sexy, like that. dirty talk, leave it. Yeah. Leave it. Yeah. Oh, dirty. Yeah. yeah. So John really wants, we're going to do a whole episode on dirty talk. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't. We're going to do one episode where people leave some dirty talk. Oh, it's going to be amazing, dude. And we're going to play it back. Sean, yeah, I mean, yeah. come on. That's, yeah. that's good. That's, that's, that's oh. radio level. Oh, we want, yeah, do we want them to leave it to us? Like, like they're talking yeah, we to pick. us. We pick. oh, yeah, I, yeah. no, no, you no, I don't want. You don't have to be talking to us. You could talk uh, talk about. I just want to hear something that I've never heard before on a podcast, which is mm. record, recorded dirty talk. I want you. I want you guys talking about me and John. <laughs> I want very personal fantasies. That's a little aggressive. Skin in the game, dude. Skin okay. in the game. Okay, okay, back to your back to our podcast. And now what, what, what if what if we have fifty messages and it's all Sean? Not not one John of Dirty Talk. I'll edit it so that it says that both. Hi, it's John, and then it'll, <laughs> and then it'll say, "Yeah, I love your shaved head." <laughs> <laughs> from when you were a monk, dude. Yeah, monk. Right. Hey, I heard from someone that they would love to see you with short hair. Uh, no, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna. Okay, it, fair it, enough. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hey, wait, you should be on my side because you're wearing a hat. I think you look great, but I know you, you're you going to transition. You put a hat on. Th- th- that's what I'm talking about. If I shave my head because other people think it looks good, I'm the one that has to, to sit in the mirror every day. I'm the one that's like, fuck, and have to feel insecure. So, yeah, I'm not falling for that trap. I'm growing my beard out a little bit to see what it does to the – Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you have a nice head. Back. Sean, you have a nice head. You can yeah, do anything thanks. you want with your head. Yeah. The, what's sure. weird about it is that it's gray on the sides. <laughs> It's a halo. <laughs> less less gray on the top. And so it actually yeah. kind of looks like a power donut bef- be- without it being a power donut. 
Oh God, you're a power donut and I'm an apple fritter. Okay. I look, I had I have questions. Yes. That we're gonna get to, but really quickly, I need I think we need to talk about this and I think we're doing it already subtly. Mm-hmm. I think we should be helping men more. Yeah. I and, agree. And that's kind of the point of this podcast, right? Yes. Okay. Someone was saying like, hey, uh, I kind of have, I'm like, ha- I've had it with two bros talking podcasts. And I was like, well, then listen to a different podcast. Mm. Because this would be a, a different podcast if, if one of us wasn't here. Mm. Yeah. And the beauty is it's two men talking about being men. How can we be better men talking about stuff that doesn't get talked about? Yes. If one of us wasn't here, it would just be my podcast. Is what what I do with talking or to my myself. podcast, yeah, <laughs> right, like, a get, like where we have guests and yeah. we talk about different yeah. topics. So yeah. I think that's the beauty of this podcast, and it also it's not just for men. Women love hearing men talk about men, and well, also I, like, don't you think that most of our listeners are women? Yes, that was one of my questions. Who do you think our audience is? Oh, and who do you think our mostly audience? women, mostly women. But yes. I, but I think because women are curious about two middle-aged men and their inner journey and like what you know and if these guys are gonna be honest i'm curious i i I would be curious of about two women uh in their you know say 40s talking about uh uh, things that uh, men don't usually get to hear them talking about you know frustrations and struggles um my ask would be uh uh for them to share it with um their male friends Mm. you know yeah i mean we got a cool cover Right, We've got the '90s neon. Yeah, I it's think we have a cool all, cover. We it's talk not about all flowery. Uh, we talk about dicks. We hey, listen. We also talk about um, other stuff too, like um, fitness, and you know, it's not just all like um, sensitive topics. Right. You know, yeah. I think we're doing good. cars once in a while. Yeah, every now and then. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to push back on the whole middle aged man thing, but why? But we are. we are. We are. No, you there's stigma? are. Sean. 40 41 late 40 oh you're 41 yeah 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 you're not really i would say i would say mid to late 40s is when is it when the middle age starts thank right? you so you're early yeah thank you what, what what should what should i call you then just, just sean two men in two their men. Yeah. 40s and 50s middle age does have stigma it is a little bit stained uh um, it does make me feel old so i guess i, I just i won't use it I mean, no one wants to listen to a podcast by two middle-aged men. <laughs> so are we talking about like Microsoft, like SaaS solutions? No. See, see, this is why I was saying uh, the uh, um, that's what she said jokes. I was just trying to fit the brand of middle-aged men. But now that we're not middle-aged, all that <laughs> all those jokes are gone now. See, it was it was <laughs> that made sense. Okay, so we are talking to men. I want to talk to men more. I actually just realized this uh, yesterday that I give advice to women for the most part. Yeah. And I found yeah. my voice talking to women, but I have not found my voice talking to men because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, I either throw them under the bus or I'm a little condescending or I like baby them a little bit. Oh, interesting. And so I was kind of curious, like, how do you, like you have a more of a male audience. You're kind of used to talking to dudes. Yeah. Like, I also how- run uh, men's retreats and I think um, um, just being a gym rat, I'm, I'm around dudes all the time, all different types of dudes. So um the whole the whole box of crayons, you know. So how do you? I mean, I know how to talk to guys. Like, hey, John, what's up? You know, like I know yeah. how to make conversation. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to give advice to men. It's actually harder. It's much yeah. harder to give advice to men, I think, than women. What do we? So how do we? Well, I I love the idea of kind of giving advice without giving advice. You know, mm. um, usually when we give it by advice, people push back, no, no matter what gender. But um, it's, I think especially men. Men don't want to hear. Men don't want to be told. This is a generalization, of course. What, what? But I think men sharpen men. So I think men um, watch, observe. Uh, this is the whole, the the whole, whole Keanu Reeves thing I was telling you about. Like he doesn't give advice. He lives his life a certain way. I absorb how he lives his life, and it's inspirational. So I think that's kind of how um, you know men men watch other men. Uh, I think men call each other out more so than women do. Like men are pretty abrupt, blunt. Like, like, um, hey, the, the, you know, I I found out you're, hey, you shouldn't cheat on your partner or whatever it is. Like, they, they, I think they call each other. We call each other out more. Um, and of course, of course, it's a generalization. But I think women, um, 
I don't know. I don't. I, I always, I always, I always do the whole cats and dogs thing. I think men are just sometimes just very simple, like dogs. Do you think men call each other out? I think if you're close, you do. Yeah. I, I think really if think you're, if you don't know each other well, we we don't. We want to fight each other. It's actually really interesting. I was uh, having dinner alone uh, last week. I go to restaurants alone. You you do yeah. too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no big deal. And uh, the people next to me were having this conversation. They were like in their mid twenties, late twenties, I think, and they were talking about um, couples cheating. Mm-hmm. And the guy said, "Oh yeah, my male friends won't tell me if they're cheating because they know that I'm going to call them out on it." Mm, yeah. And yeah. so some people are, they're selective about who they share stuff with based on how, like how much integrity they have. Right. So I think some men call each other out and other men protect each other. Mm, and they're like, lie a, for each yeah. other. like a, like a brotherhood kind of thing. Yeah. Like a dirty brotherhood. Um, I have friends that, uh, we don't spend every day together, but we're close. We're going to, I call them, um, uh, porch swing friends. What I mean by that is we're going to grow old together. You're we're going to be on a porch. Sw- I knew, yeah. I knew what you said, what you meant. Because you 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 sometimes need the John Kim dictionary because you're like what an exhaust pipe. What I can picture talking? you guys growing old together. Yeah, Sean, you're going to be a porch swing friend. My fingers are crossed. You're headed that way. Yeah, I mean, man, it's expensive porch swing. We're going to look back and we're going to be like, remember that podcast we did right before we were middle aged? Right before? Yeah, yeah, before we got <laughs> huge. <laughs> um. <laughs> I I, uh, I do have some friends that uh yeah if I see something in that like if they're making wrong choices if they're doing things I think uh, uh you know where they're harming them if I see them going down a dark path um I'll take them out to dinner and be like dude you know mm. what's going on what are you doing like I will call them out uh I I don't know I don't know if I would do that with my female friends um, but with my guy friends I have no problem doing that. Mm. Yeah, and and most of them appreciate it. Most of them are not defensive about it, because I don't I don't like uh, come at them, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to think about whether I do that. Hey, speaking of, I got a great question for us. Yes, let's do it. All right, you ready? Yeah. Boom. Hey guys, it's Lily from Santa Barbara, 48 years old. At what age do men? give up on the bros before hoes because I've been dating this guy for like a week and a half and he got mad at me because I wanted him to spend time with me instead of watching that soccer game um, with his friends and so we basically stopped talking because I didn't understand the bros before hoes thing I mean who doesn't have guy friends that are like hey you seem interested in this girl you can watch the world cup later we can hang out later. Prioritize the love in your life. No, that's not happening. Okay. Um, love you guys. Bye. Another thing we can retire. Bros yeah. before hoes. That's an obvious one. I'll let her know. Yeah, that's 90s. What do you think about that question? I don't think it's a, uh, a gender thing. I think <laughs> I hate to say. Speaking of nineties, I don't think he's that into her. Remember that whole thing? He's just not that into you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I feel like uh, if he was into her, uh, if he made a uh, commitment with his uh, male friends, and he had to go, he he would say, "Hey, I have to go to this. I really want to spend time with you. Let me make up." make it up to you or he wouldn't just go and be like, all right, it's over kind of thing. Like, like bros before hoes. Like that's, it doesn't sound like to me that he's that into her. That's so funny that you would look at it that way. I think it's important for us to not drop our friends as soon as we meet someone. I think Mm -hmm. you're, you're right. He might not be into her, Yeah. but also we don't, we don't know that it's the world. Like she's saying that he decided to watch the world cup with his friends yeah. rather than hang out with her. And she was like, Oh, you could just, your friends should just say like, Oh, you could watch it later. First of all, you can't watch the world cup later yeah. with She's taking friends. it personally. Yeah. They're all watching it. It's like, this is the day that the world cup happens. And sometimes like watching a thing with your buddies is so fun. And I sure. would rather do that sure. than go on a date. Also, if that was planned, I, you, you can't expect him to cancel. And she was like, he wants to watch the World Cup rather than sp- spend time with me. No, it could be both. It's just he just can't do both at the same time. Yeah, she's using it as a way to measure his love for her or his desire for her, which isn't fair because it's an event. And 
she's she's been dating him for a week and a half. That's not first of all yeah. dating. That's yeah. like you've been on a date or two dates max. And now you're wanting to prioritize spending time with you rather than with your homies? Yeah. I think both are happening. I mean, uh, what I know uh, uh, know about men, a uh, uh, generalization again, is when we're into someone, um, if we can't make it, we'll at least explain and make sure things are cool. We're not just going to be like, oh, see ya. And we're going to make time. We're going to say, look, I can't see you because it's the World Cup. Yeah, but, but we can do that. Yeah. Let's do it after or let's right. do it the next day. Right. They're, they're going to make it. I guess this is also kind of like a side, a little bit of a tangent, but uh, a lot of people like get really triggered when someone bails on a date. Yes. They, they internalize. They internalize it. They yeah. make it personal. Yeah. And, and it's okay to feel that. And then that raises a bunch of questions. Are they into me? They're into you if they make it up to you. Mm. If they yes. say, hey, like I'm that. really sorry. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, they're not into it. Yeah. If they but, cancel without rescheduling it, they're most likely not into it. And and to be fair to her, uh, because it's early, uh and, and you know, a, a week or two in, we're still wondering. It's also you know, lots of sparks and uh it's it's it, you know, it's it's fresh, it's, it's exciting and also um we're very vulnerable. So I, I get it that, that you may feel unchosen because he decided to watch soccer with his boys, you know. Yeah. That feeling's valid is what I'm saying. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You're validating. Validate. Yeah. So, bros before hoes. Retired. Not... Uh, in the other jar next to the, that's what she said, jokes in the basement. Retired, yeah. Retired, yeah. but also, uh, I guess, is it a mentality? I guess there are, I think it's a pretty juvenile, immature perspective to have is that like my male friends come, ab come before uh, female partnership or just love at all costs. Yeah, it definitely came from the locker room. Um, this, this, you know, we, we, we got each other's backs and they're secondary. We have to take care of each other's, you know, yeah. They're less than kind of thing. Semper Fi. Yeah. Semper Fi. Female. You know what? You know what's also women funny? Are the, enemy. the, the, the dudes that say bros before hoes are the first dudes that actually uh, don't back it and, uh, will, you know, not go out with their bros because yeah, they're yeah, scared yeah, to yeah, lose yeah, their to, partner. Yeah. yeah. To go or, or to go get laid. Yeah. 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 Bros before, before hoes, unless I'm getting laid. Yeah. Unless, except me. Yeah. Not it. That's funny. Not it. <laughs> not it. Okay. All right. We got another one. Yep. You ready? Yep. Um, mm. you choose guys can't flirt or libido differences. Libido differences. I think Oof. that's common. Guys can't flirt is, I mean, I don't know. Also, con we can hit it after. You ready? Yeah. Hi, guys. My name is Marie. I'm 33 years old, and I'm from Germany. My question for you two is, since both of you defined yourself as highly sexual, how do you deal with different sex drives? My last relationship was deeply affected by this. Mm -hmm. I felt so much pressure for my ex because he always wanted and demanded more sex to feel connected to me, mm -hmm. even to the point where he told me how much he suffered from having so little sex after my mom died and I was so focused otherwise. So I'm really afraid of something like that in the future. I really enjoy sex when I have it. But other areas of feeling connected beyond orgasms and penetration matter more to me or are the foundation of sex, like emotional connection. I don't care how much sex I have, as long as I and my partner truly enjoy it. I'm so turned off by the idea that someone demands it from me. How do you guys deal with it? What is your advice? Thank you. Bye. What a great question and thorough. Yes. Yep. I think you're going to be better at answering this question than, than, than me. What? I feel like, I mean, yeah. It's weird. I, I have to take off the uh, professional hat uh, or no, I got to put on my professional hat because, you know, um, I'm also a person and, and um, um, I don't want to, um, to sway based on, you know, John Kim lenses. I want to be more neutral about it. Well, I think I think I kind of want the John Kim lens as well. <sighs> right. But I can go first. Yes. I have a lot of thoughts about this. First of all, 
If your partner is grieving, it's going to affect their libido. It's an asshole dick move. Sorry, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Agreed. It's I'm, I'm taking those words back because they're gendered. <laughs> asshole dick. <laughs> <laughs> the asshole dick, dick part. Why is dick yeah, this... negative? You know, and pussy also has a negative connotation as being like oh, weak willed. I was talking to my friends about this. It's 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 a shitty move to to expect that your partner isn't going to have some effect mm. in their libido mm -hmm. if they're grieving the death of somebody important. It's super selfish. It's very yeah. self-centered. I hate it. Right? Like you are not supporting your partner if you're making them feel bad for not wanting to have sex with you while they're grieving I the agree. loss of their I agree 100%. Parent. Yeah. Number 1. Number 2, men seek some men seek closeness through sex because sex yeah. is a gateway to feeling connection. intimately yeah. connection because they struggle connecting in other ways that women are better at like emotionally mm. right and she even said i want more than just sexual connection there's more to it than orgasms and penetration right right like massages bubble bath like spending two hours or an hour in the bath with your with your lover just being playful and sexy and sensual can be very intimate and can lead to a lot of closeness, right? And these are activities that like maybe men aren't prioritizing enough and they just sort of want to do the wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So those are my, that's my level one thoughts. We can go, we can progressively go lower and lower. Wow. Levels. How many levels do you have? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think for me, uh, so some of my uh, uh, struggles and things I'm looking at currently is um, where's the line between uh, respecting one space and um, respecting the way that they want to connect and you, um, you know, uh, uh, fulfilling your life force, like being it be like not not shaming yourself for, for being sexual. Um, I've always been kind of like high on that. And I think I've also also. Uh, at one point, I thought it was a, a sex addict uh, because when I was married, she found uh, an adult video on my desktop, one one video clip. And uh, the next thing I know, I'm in SAA meetings thinking I was a sex addict. So um, she was also Christian and, and very conservative. Yeah. Uh, so I want to be careful that I'm not shaming myself uh, because I have some kinks or, or that because I do uh, connect with people sexually and I, and I crave sex. Uh, but at the same time, I also don't want to um, – I want to look at it. I want to make sure that, um, you know, it, it, is, it is not a way of uh, numbing, running, hiding, that it is not an addiction, and it is something that um, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, abusing, right? So, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, it's something that I'm, I'm on – I'm in that journey, you know. But, but th some things I've learned is, um, uh, like with the grief um, – women who've had babies it's not fair because they're changing and and their 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 relationship with their bodies are changing and men men don't have babies so we don't know yeah. um but i think there's it's common that a lot of men after women have a kid you know a, a couple months after then expect things to go back to the way they were or um, put a lot of pressure on them and then i think a lot of men feel like oh you know I, i'm being left out in the cold because i haven't had sex without considering what she is going through, have just gone through. Yeah. And uh, you have to be patient, man. And, and, and the thing that's been helpful to me is like, if you are pressuring someone to be intimate with you and then they have to do it because they feel bad or they, they, they're doing it for you, is that the kind of sex you want? You know, I think that's some like, guys don't care. Well, I, that's not maybe, maybe in my twenties, but uh, as a 51 year old, I, that's the quality cares more. To, I care more about quality than, than quantity. Yeah. I don't want no, I don't want drive through sex. Yeah. But I think some guys would be really, I mean, I think some guys would be super happy with drive through sex. Actually, they okay. prefer it because it means they don't have to do fuck all to please them. It's just yeah. like, you know, it's convenient. It's convenient well, and they, they get their fill and then, and then they can move on to watching the the bulls or it, it it isn't good for the relationship meaning it's fast food um it's not it's not there isn't nutrients you're definitely not eating vegetables it's processed 
Yeah. Every now and then, a little quickie by, you know, the. Oh, that's m- fun. Yeah, that's Mickey D's. And fun. That's little different. Mickey D's every now and then is fine. <laughs> Fuck it, Friday. Chicken nuggets. Am I right? Yeah. yeah a little chicken nuggets. A Big Mac. A Big Mac once a month is good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not even that big, though. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I was going to say something, Sean. I was so close to saying it, but I bit <sighs> my tongue. Yeah, oh, it's not even that big. It was, it was, per, it was I was going to. You know what it happens? Just, oh. It totally ruins the flow. Oh, because it's like a speed bump. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. you could be like, you know what? I remember the Big Mac being like the fucking king of burgers when I was a kid. And I had one a couple of years ago and it was so fucking disappointing. It's just small and sad. Right. But then when you hit the, that's what she said, boom, it's gone. <laughs> the whole thing's gone. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, I, had, great, I, had, I, had, I had I had like two opportunities so far in the last 10 minutes. I didn't do it. John, anyway. let me, yes. let me give you a compliment real quick. Your ability to course correct, second to none. Oh. Your ability to take feedback, consider it, see why it's being given to you, and then act on it and, and stick to it, amazing. Wow. Really, Thank really you. nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a delight to have these conversations with you. Oh, thanks, Sean. Yeah. That means a lot. Thank you. I'm not going to say any buts or try to make jokes. I'm just going <laughs> to, my work is to uh, accept more compliments. So thank you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. So libido differences. Um, yeah. Patience. Curiosity. Right. Mm, how, mm-hmm. how are you experiencing this libido difference in your relationship? Are mm-hmm. you talking about it or are you kind of like, the dude makes a pass or initiates the woman declines. There's resentment, but we're not talking about it. Yeah. Or do we have a conversation and say, Hey, look, like I'd love to talk about our sex life. I get the impression that you want it more. I want it less. Here's where I'm coming from. I'd love to understand where you're coming from, what it means to you. What, what does sex mean to you? What does it mean for us to have sex? Right. And then maybe I can share what it means for me to have sex and what, could be yeah. a nice alternative to sex as well so that she doesn't feel like she's just a, a validation machine um i i think i hate to say just men but i i think where we can do better is men need to talk about sex more instead of um and uh, myself included instead of demanding it or instead of um just wanting it uh actually talk about it talk about uh what turns you on talk about you know what it's like for you like just like just open conversation often and i want to say that this is very hard to do if you don't have yeah. if you haven't if you're not in the habit of doing it it's hard to do and it's a little awkward yeah because when we don't do it we don't have practice when do we Our talk parents about sex? didn't talk to us about no sex. no and then and i think for 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 women we uh i think women need to uh um, um talk about what they like and don't like uh because you know, our society has conditioned women. I mean, just look at porn um, to, to, to perform or to please men. So uh, to express, Hey, this feels good. Actually, I don't, I never liked when you did this. <laughs> I don't like, the, you know, and again, just talking about it and understanding, exploring, uh, then people feel more safe and then um, more, more, more sex will happen. You know, uh, the quality of sex will go up. Yeah. I also want to just um, add to, or thank you for bringing up the, perspective about uh, women who just had children yeah right after childbirth i I have a friend here um, who just had a kid on her own and she is she says that she her libido was has never been as high as it was while she was pregnant Mm. and then it hasn't been as low or non-existent as after having her kid yeah because the body doesn't her body doesn't feel like it's hers anymore right Right. Like it was, right. it was for having a child. She had the child. Now it's, you know, she's like, um, it just hasn't come back and she's not shaming herself. And she also doesn't have a partner. She had the kid on her own. So she doesn't have a partner that's like asking for it or turn, trying to turn her on or, or whatever. Um, but I think it's a very common experience for women to like have to find their sexuality back after having a kid. Yeah. It's something that people don't talk about. Uh, it, it's something that uh, I think we minimize. Um, men don't know what it's like, you know. 
um, me witnessing it for the first time in my life, uh, we have one child, um, has been eye opening. You know, witnessing some the transformation, the uh, God, all the all the things that women go through after having childbirth, uh, brain fog, uh, being disconnected with their bodies. I mean, you know, and then also the kid. I mean, they're literally breastfeeding. They're, yeah. they're, they're, you know, the last thing they want, they, they want is for, for just someone else to, 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 to absorb breastfeed. from them. What? Yeah. To breastfeed. Yeah. 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 To absorb, to take. To take. Uh, yeah. We, we got to be more sensitive, uh, uh, I think with that and, um, self, self soothe, talk about it, you know? Um, yeah. Masturbate in the sauna. Masturbate in the sauna. And and listen, um, every couple it's unique, you know. So we're not we're not saying that it's like that for everyone, but it's something uh, to talk about and to consider. Because um, if there's no talking, there's going to be resentment. Uh, people are going to have expectations. Um, I think a lot of people um, minimize what uh, you know having a baby is like. They think they want things to go back to normal. You know, it's like, oh, it's what the baby's out. Let's where's date night? Where's our, you know, where's our uh, uh, weekly whatever? And uh, it takes time. It takes time. I mean, I think that if you expect anything to go back to normal after having a kid, you have wild, things unrealistic expectations yeah. about what it takes yeah. to ha to raise a child. Yeah, and the impact it's going to have on your life, which is why I don't have a kid, man. I'm terrified. Yeah. You know, sometimes what I'll do as a guy, as a man, is I'll 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 do this. Uh, I'll try to like genuinely do this. Imagine what it would be like for my partner to be constantly, um, like grabbing me, like grabbing my like like I'm just walking around. She's like grabbing my dick or something, or saying like you know, um, or or saying like uh, you know, uh, let me put it in my mouth or so you know, just the all the shit that meant you know sexual sexual advances, right? And, and of course, there's a part of me that's like, oh, that's kind of hot. But imagine that constantly. And then imagine living in a world where when I go outside, I'm also feeling unsafe. And there's strangers looking at my butt or mm. rubbing against me. And then I come home and then my husband or boyfriend's like, we haven't had sex today. Let's, you know, or can I, can I stick it in or can, you know, whatever graphic stuff. And then pouting because I don't feel like having sex. Yeah. And then, wow. so like the, the constant, you know, I, I, I can imagine that that really helps me. Cause if I imagine living in that kind of world, then I'm like, Oh fuck, there's nowhere to run. Yeah. I'm just and gonna go in the basement, lock myself in a, you know, room. Well, and if, and if you have a kid, then you've got a kid grabbing at all your parts. Yeah. 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 Going yeah. mommy, mommy. It's very hard to feel sexy. It's yeah. very hard to, yeah. So. I think that was really nice, like to put yourself in women's shoes where they're. To really being, do it, to like, yeah. like do it and also con consider culture and society and you know advertising and media and all of that yeah constantly sexualize and objectify yeah. and, and, and you the don't pressure feel safe. the pressure for you to look sexy look sexy and satisfy your partner yeah it's a lot man yeah and don't and while you're working you're not getting paid as much as men too yeah i mean we go on and on but just just in i think the sex department mm. alone you know, yeah, we just hit an hour or two, so we can't go, can't keep going. Yeah, let's keep it in the bedroom, Sean. Keep it in the bedroom, nice. Hey, uh, people are asking for longer episodes and more episodes, and I told them no. <laughs> See, you do speak your truth. You don't seek validation. Um, to strangers. I, I, I agree with you. I think it's a compliment. Thank you. Thank you for wanting more. Yeah. That's, that's nice. It's nice to um, want a second kiss. You know? Yeah, and I said uh, we're gonna, we gotta you gotta keep people wanting more a little bit. You know, yeah. you gotta leave when the party's good. Well, also, you know, uh, Sean and I have about an hour, and then um, then the the plane goes down, the yeah. nose dives. So yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. want, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you're getting the we're, you're giving you the best. <laughs> this is, I mean, John's just waking up, right? Like this is yeah. this is it. This is peak Sean and this John. Is peak, time. This is peak. 9 30 a.m is peak. it's all downhill from here on a you monday guys, if you, yeah if you guys want 62 minutes you're, you're not gonna listen to the show anymore we're fresh too from the weekend right john's oh. re john's recovered he hasn't worked out in a couple of days he's all he's all high on testosterone if we did this wednesday it would be a whole different show hump day dude awkward silences we just look at each other it would be horrible and it's called this is all we got this is all we got yeah <laughs> yeah leftovers <laughs> 
Um, but thank you for the compliment. That's sweet. Yeah, it is sweet. Yeah. Um, cool. That's it. Yeah. That was good. Oh, hey, my uh, male celebrity crush. This is all I could come up with. Denzel Washington. Oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> wait, why? Wait, wait, wait. So, so, so first of all, can I, can I just say, because the Keanu Reeves thing, I think it got a little miss. I, I, when I, when Sean said a male celebrity crush, I didn't go to, this is some guy I want to have sex with. It was some guy I like, I like something about him, his story, the way that he shows up in the world. And I just, I just thought of Keanu Reeves. So with Denzel, is that something, is that someone that you actually are sexually attracted to? Or is it like you like his energy? What is it? What's the crush? No, it's, I just, I like his energy. You know, yeah. he's got, he's got some daddy, some like daddy energy. Yeah. I mean, it's more like grand, granddaddy energy. Granddaddy. Very masculine. <laughs> yeah. Quiet strength. Yeah. Like you, you know what's up just by his stare. That kind of strength. Right? You don't fuck with Denzel, dude. Yeah. 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 You don't fuck with Denzel. Um, I think maybe he's like, I, I'd want to be more like Denzel a little bit. Mm, yeah. Quiet I don't want to have sex with him. It's not, it, it's, yeah, it's not, not that, that kind of crush. crush. Yeah. But also I like, I like him in his, I like him in his movies. Good acting. Um, wow. I didn't expect that. Good to know. Curve I ball. love it. Yeah. Curve ball on a Monday. Makes sense. Uh, All right, everyone. Thank you for listening and uh, call us. Please call us. Call us at 657-549-1001. Also leave a review. I love them. It's my favorite, second favorite oh, part would, of the day. Yeah. Be first favorite part of the day or of the week, talking to John for an mm. hour. Second favorite, reading your reviews. Yes, we actually read them. And so uh, uh, you guys have been so generous leaving reviews. Thank you so much. We're almost up to 300. I, is that true? Yeah. Two, nice. 280 or is it high twos. I mean, for, 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 for the... Um, Amount of episodes we have, that's amazing. I think we're, that's amazing. We're crushing. We're almost at smartless levels. I wouldn't say that. I don't know if we're, don't know if we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely not there. But, but uh, we want to be there. I, I, yeah. I feel like you and I want to do a smartless type show. You and I, you, Sean, you and I, we're dreamers. We are dreamers. And so that's why. We're big. No, no limit, man. We're, yeah. 275. You're right. 275. Dude, we only have, what, 11 episodes? 4.9 still. Sean, I've been doing my podcast for like 15 years, three times a week, 800 or 700 episodes, and I'm only at 1,000 reviews. You don't ask for them. I just, no, I just think, you know, if people give reviews if they want to, and, they, and they're moved by it. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not shitting on myself. I'm just, I'm, I'm using that as a marker to show you how fast this one's growing. I'm just saying it's just data. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that my podcast sucks. I'm just saying this one is exponentially growing faster. Yeah. I mean, uh, Synergy. We got two, two people. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's great. I think it's great. Love you, everybody. Thank you for listening. Be well. Have a beautiful week.